What is up guys, my name is John and I am the creator of the Flexible Combat System. In this video I'm going to be really quickly going over the features of the system. Before we start I just wanted to say that everything you see in this video in terms of the functionality, key bindings etc can be tweaked and configured to fit your game with minimal effort. I'll be going into more detail on that in my upcoming tutorial video but I thought it was worth mentioning in case you see something you like but you want to change it slightly. Okay, let's get into this. So, the first thing you'll notice is a heads up display. This HUD keeps track of the character level, health, stamina and experience. Each stat is tracked, showing the maximum value and the current value. Stamina will drain when attacking, blocking and rolling. Blocking will drain the stamina over time, a roll will drain a set amount of stamina and each attack, depending on which attack it is, will drain a different amount of stamina. So each ability will reduce your stamina and prevent your stamina from regenerating for a few seconds. If you use another ability during this time, the timer will reset and you'll have to wait a few more seconds before it goes up again. After waiting a few seconds without using an ability, your stamina will then begin to regenerate. In terms of character controls, you can left click to attack, right click to block, space to roll and control to crouch. I've purposefully not mapped any of the controls, so if you don't like any of the keybinds I've set up, you can change them to fit your game with a few clicks. By making our character roll we can dodge attacks, and by making him crouch we can sneak around, but I'll talk more about that later. By pressing tab you can lock onto and target enemies. You can flick to a target on your left or right of your current target with the E and Q keys. Again, these keybinds can easily be changed. When locked onto a target, your character will change his attack stance to combat ready and he will lock on facing the target. I wanted to give the player more freedom when locking onto a target, so your character will only lock on facing the target if you turn the character to face the target. If you're locked on and then roll, you will unlock your character from the target, allowing you to move freely again. If you want your character to constantly lock to the target, this can be changed by simply plugging in a group of nodes I've made but I've disconnected. I wanted to give you guys some flexibility in terms of how each feature works, so I've implemented both ways. You can pick up weapons with the E key and press T to draw and sheath your weapon. At the moment we have four attack styles, fists, one hand and shield, two handed and dual wield. The beauty of this system is that attack styles can be added in incredibly easy. All you need is some animations. In my upcoming tutorial I'll be showing you just how easy it is and together we'll go through how we can add a new attack style to the system and we'll actually be adding a new one together in that very video. So I'm sure you're all eager to know if this system is compatible with ranged and magic attacks. And not only is it compatible but it's super simple and easy to add in. It's pretty much as simple as using a branch and a variable. If you're wondering, I will eventually release an update of this system working together with magic and ranged attacks, but that's for another day. At the moment, each weapon has four combo attacks. Each attack needs to be fired off one after another in order to combo. Any damage taken or blocked attacks will reset the combo. Damage is calculated by multiplying the weapon damage with your combo attack with your character level, meaning you can rack up huge damage by getting off your combo attacks. When attacking a target, a damage pop-up will appear with the damage you've dealt, or block or parry text will appear if your attack was avoided. This pop-up text can easily be removed if unwanted. When stealthed, which I'll talk about later, you can assassinate a target, instantly killing them and playing an assassination animation. A slow motion kill cam will occur when an enemy is low enough health to kill with a weapon swing. The conditions for this can be changed easily, whether you want slow motion to occur every time, randomly or at certain times. The system is easily adaptable to fit your preferences. When you kill an enemy, they will give your character a certain amount of experience points. The amount of XP given by the enemy when killed can be typed in after placing him in the level. When your XP reaches the XP required to level up, all your stats will increase, increasing your health, stamina, XP required to level up again and your damage multiplier. The saving system is laid out so you can save and load your game any way you want. All you need to do is call a pre-blueprinted custom event and you're done. This means the way your game is saved is completely up to you. 
but currently I've implemented a save, load, restart level menu, and checkpoints. These also work across levels. Now, for AI. The AI is programmed for combat, patrolling areas, and noise detection slash investigating. For combat, the AI works similar to that of the character. Each AI can be given a combat style by simply placing them in the level and selecting which style you want them to have. This means you no longer need to worry about creating heaps of different AI varieties, making producing maps and levels super easy. New combat styles can be added the same way you add new combat styles for the character. They have damage multipliers depending on their weapon and combo attacks just like the character. And all their health can be changed upon placing them in the level. The AI will cycle between attacking, blocking and strafing the player. For patrolling, the AI can either be idle or they can patrol a route. To make an AI patrol an area, all you have to do is adjust the pathway spline to whatever route you want it to patrol. It's as easy as that. If no pathway is given, then the AI will just stay idle. For noise detection and investigating, we first need to talk about character stealth. When the character is crouched, he is silent. When he's walking around like normal, he's making footstep noise. If the player is close enough to the AI while making noise, the AI will investigate this noise. If the player makes a new noise while the AI is investigating, the AI will investigate the newly created noise. If when the AI has reached the area where the noise occurred and the player is no longer there, the AI will return to its original position. As soon as the AI sees the player, he will draw his weapon and attack. If the player runs out of line of sight of the AI, the AI will continue to look for the player, but based on the noise he is making. If the player manages to avoid being seen by the AI while being quiet, the AI will eventually return to his original location. The player can also use their noise detection to his advantage and make a distraction which will bring the AI to investigate, leaving openings for assassinations or maneuvering. Finally, the AI have health bars above their head, displaying their health. The health bar will display at a similar range at which the AI can hear the player. So if you can see their health, they can most likely hear your footsteps. The different AI commands are clearly set up in the behavior tree, meaning more AI commands can be created with relative ease. Both the player and AI can block attacks. If a strike is made against the blocking target, the player who tried to attack will be briefly staggered, leaving them open to attacks. When the player or AI has reached zero health, they will go ragdoll. When a player dies, a simple death screen will fade in, and when clicked on, will respawn the player at their last save. Again, easily adaptable for your own project. A particle system will be spawned when an attack hits or is blocked. The particle systems can easily be changed or adapted. The on-hit particle systems are all set up in the weapon settings, meaning each weapon can be given a unique particle system with no blueprinting required. And that, my friends, is more or less everything. If you're contemplating purchasing the asset, I will see you all in my tutorial video where I will show you how we can tweak certain features, change our character, cool things like that. Thank you all so much for watching. See you next time.